sucker for synthwave. <laughs> so I could see myself getting this thing in like some weird midnight purple color and <laughs> putting a cassette player in here and making myself like a little synthwave mix. Yeah. And just driving at midnight every night. I would do that. That would be really cool. That would be fun. Yeah. If I if I bought this car, that's definitely what I would do with it. That's the kind of music experience you want in this car. Where the music's just kind of background. Yeah. And you but the the driving is the main point. driving something that I'm actually really stoked for. This is a 1990 <laughs> 50 Mustang. Yeah, it's a 1990 5 liter V8 Mustang. I love it. Why are you excited about this? Because I love cars of this era. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because they're really ugly and boxy. Uh, <laughs> and why is that cool? And why do you love that? I don't know. I have a problem. Like the Volvo 240 wagon. <laughs> Perfect, beautiful. <laughs> Couldn't be any better. This thing, also beautiful. When uh, when you said we were getting a 1990 Mustang, I got my my body styles confused. I was like, ah, dang it. I pictured like the early 2000s Mustang, the pointy ones. Nah, it's 10 years too late. Yeah, this, this is... thing, when I saw this, I was like, ah, yes. Yeah, it's boxy, it's a hatchback. I wish that uh, Mustangs would continue to be hatchbacks. Yeah, this is it's sweet. I really like the look of it. It, it kind of just chops off the back. It's really cool. Yeah. The gentleman we borrowed this from has kept this thing in immaculate shape. Yeah, it is in really, really good shape. This almost feels like it could be like almost brand new. This is, yeah, this is the oldest car we've reviewed and it's in considerably better condition than some of the much newer cars. Yeah, definitely. There, there's a Kia Stinger that uh, oh. we we borrowed and returned. Uh, we didn't review it because it was in such crappy condition. Yeah. And that was like a one-year-old car. That's insane. And the I've guy, never seen a car trash so quickly. Yeah, the guy treated it like complete garbage. This is the, uh, <laughs> this is the way you treat a car. It's mind-blowing. This is great. Three, two, one. <laughs> yes. Sixty. 60. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. Okay, that's pretty fun. <laughs> and the seatbelt. Hey, the seatbelts are doing their job. I'm stuck now. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I want something like this. Okay, that what, convinced what that, me. Five and a half seconds. It probably maybe? felt like five, five, five and a half. Yeah, yeah. about right. I think that was what this car was about. It's, Back in the 90s, you're listening to your grunge and driving one of these things around, just stomping it, and the tires are going to spin. 220 is plenty <laughs> to spin your back tires yeah. a little bit. Definitely happened there. That was like a, awesome. bit, of, a bit of a spinning situation. Awesome. But then it picks up. I mean, it's not too much power so that you just keep spinning. It'll take off eventually. It took off pretty quick. Man, that's so much fun. That was a lot of fun. Honestly, there are similarities between this and modern Mustangs, yeah. obviously, but I feel like modern Mustangs will still look totally different than this. 100%. Like, yeah. Totally, totally, totally different. This is very angular. It's very boxy. It's very cyber trucky. Yeah. Oh, the cyber truck. <laughs> it's just blocky and like a cube. It's very sharp. It's very blunt. There's no uh, finesse we, to it. What I'm scared about driving this is we are the crumple zone. If we get in a crash, you and I are the crumple zone in this car. We are dead. It's super true with cars from this time period. Yeah. Safety standards. Meh. I mean, Who needs them? Yeah. Who needs safety standards? Yeah. Now, one thing that's interesting, I feel like, is comparing the engine of this and the engine of the Viper. The Viper was a 93 that we reviewed. It had a V10, and it produced 400 horsepower on the dot. This has a 5-liter V8 that produces 225 horsepower. That's a little baby output Which, from a big old it's V8. It's mind-blowing to me, like, how far uh, engine technology has come and how much output has come. Yeah. Like, my Volkswagen Golf has a four-cylinder engine that produces produces 300 horsepower. Like 75 more horsepower than this five liter V8. From half the cylinders. Yeah, from half the cylinders. It's insane. You can tell that the back really wants to spin out if you're going, if you're accelerating through a turn. Yep. And there's a good bit yep, of roll. Right there, yeah. But that is so much fun. I mean, this is the most pure driving experience you can have these days. Oh. Like, we're not going that fast. We're going about as fast as we take most other cars. Cars, not SUVs. Woo! Right. 
and uh, <laughs> it feels so much more fun. It's just it more, more alive. You're more connected with the car because there's not a whole lot of electronic stuff going on. But I don't know if there's any electronics. No, stuff probably not. On. Here, I'll turn on the hazards. That's electronics. No, um, it's just it's simple. It's honest. I really, really like it for that. Gas mileage, you know it? Uh, yes, I do. It has 15 mpg in the city and 22 on the highway, which is like not eh, that bad. That's not bad for a 30 year old muscle car. <laughs> how yeah. do I put my seat back? Okay, this took me forever to figure out how to do this. Thing? It is a plastic thing, but you don't pull it up, you push it to the side. Aha! Yes, it's weird. That is weird. It took me a good five minutes struggling when I first picked this car up today, guys, to figure out how to move the seat back. We got it. But you know what else is a struggle? Getting the key out. Yes. Old technology. This car was made before either of us were born. Oh, too far back now. <laughs> when you stop it and you try to uh, well, turn it off and get the key out, it'll stick. It won't turn far enough for you to get the key out. Yep. So we had to look it up. There's a button, a little white button under the steering column. Yep. that you have to press before you can before it will relinquish the key. Now imagine doing this in like 2000 before Google or a smartphone. Oh yeah, you'd, just, you'd be screwed. You would just not be able to do it. Yep, and that'd be the it. There the was no life before the internet, clearly. S yep, so inside it's very simple and basic, obviously, but one thing I was very impressed by is power windows. Power windows? Yeah. Yes. I don't think they're one touch though. Not one touch, but that is forgivable given the age. It's a 30 year old car. 30 year old car. it does car. have power windows and has power locks. And. Um, which is cool. Power lumbar support. And. On yeah. the side of your seat, which is totally unnecessary. Fancy. Most of the things in here are plastic, like pretty yeah, cheap plastic. It's, it's really, really cheap feeling all around. But no rattles that I've heard, which is really, well, there's a rattle. So very few rattles. On a 30 year old car. On a 30 year old car. Yeah, it's not, not too bad. Um, they do have little fabric pads here on the by the armrest which is nice and the seats themselves are also a nice clothy fabric it's a uh, definitely an old school fabric but it's I don't, nice. I don't know. I kind of like it better than modern ones. One of the things I notice with older cars is older cars with leather seats degrade much more significantly than uh, older cars with cloth seats. Oh, like crazy. So I uh, I really... Oh. oh, sorry there, sport. <laughs> JT almost got us into an accident. I was reminiscing. That leads us into one big discussion. The blind spots in this car Real bad. are really bad. I didn't even see him. <laughs> like, I checked my mirror. But that mirror is about the size of my phone screen. Yeah. It is V-tiny. Blind spots are really, really bad. Yeah. I noticed that when I was driving this, I was kind of nervous driving it because the blind spots are bad. The problem is that it's right along the body of the car. It's not out on a stalk like most modern cars. Yeah. God, it is like, my fist is bigger yeah. than That's a tiny mirror. Mirrors. That might be the smallest mirror I've ever this seen. This fist is bigger than that mirror. That's wild. That's nuts. Wow, that's tiny. That would fit a whopping one. Wow, junior yeah, cheeseburger. I think so one junior cheeseburger. Or two if they're squished. Uh, wow. Oh man, that glove box is tiny. Glove box. Five. Yeah. Maybe junior cheeseburgers. Maybe five junior cheeseburgers. That's V V V small. <laughs> this is a car from 1990, and it is not designed to ferry cheeseburgers to and fro. Watch how smoothly and gracefully I eject from here and get into the back seat. Oh no. Look at that. This is a decent back seat. Seats are comfy. Back of the chair is perfect height for one's arm to be placed upon. And then there's the hatch behind me, which uh, you can fit groceries, but how much else? Here we've got a nice, we've got a little mini ashtray that, push, that you push and it rotates out because uh, Everybody in these cars would be smoking, not just the driver. Everybody, yep. Every single person smoked in the 1990s. Every one of them. Here's an interesting discussion I think we need to have. This yeah. car, you can pick one up for about $15,000. So a new Mustang starts at like, what, like 20, 20 low 20s? 21, 22, mid 20s, I think. Yeah, like low to mid 20s. Would you get one of those with the EcoBoost four cylinder engine or would you get one of no, these? No, I get this. 
Why? Because I love this. This has so much more character than the, the modern EcoBoost Mustangs. Not, I'm not bashing the EcoBoost at all. The performance in those is great. I mean, we had really enjoyed that. We reviewed one. You yeah. Check out the episode somewhere. If I'm going to spend 20 grand on a car, I'd rather it not be kind of like a cheap modern car. I'd rather it be a cool old car. Yeah. Like you can get this for 15 or 20K. You can get uh, like an older Corvette, similarly priced, and even older Corvette. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd mostly agree. I think I probably would do the same. If I had like 20 grand to spend on a car um, and it was it had to be a Mustang, I probably would get this over um, a newer Mustang. But I think I would take a newer Miata over this. Controversial uh, opinion. Tough call. Miatas are excellent. They're so much fun. They're uh, fun and they're reliable. Yeah. And you get warranties. These this, things, not so much. Like, they're not super reliable. And you're... 30 years old, things are just going to start falling apart even if you kept this thing in the best possible shape. Right. Because the materials aren't meant to last that long. It's just old. It is. And it's just like, like when you honk the horn, um, you don't even press the middle of the steering wheel. <laughs> there are like actual buttons. Oh, there are buttons on the Yeah, there are yeah. buttons that you push with your thumbs. Like, I love things like that that have just faded out of common use and you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's kind of weird, yeah, getting into this and be like, oh, yeah, this is an old car. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> Oh yeah, it sounds good. It feels good. You're getting thrown around a little bit. It's not, it's not a precise car. It's kind of brutish. Yeah, I'd agree with all that. But it is, it is quick. Like it's quick and it's capable, and it's not uncomfortable. It's just not a surgical instrument. It's not. But that is actually, I'd say, one of the most fun cars I've driven through those twisties. Totally agree. All right, let's get into it, shall we? Yes, let's do it. Starting us out. 1990 Mustang Performance. Mm -hmm. Performance. 225 horsepower. Out of a big old honking V8. Out of a big five liter V8 engine. I would give this a six. I'm gonna give its actual performance a five and a half. Wow. Because it's not an amazing car by today's standards. No. No, um, not at all. It's a capable car, and it's a it's a really fun car. And when we get to fun factor, that's where I'll give it some points. Practicality. <laughs> Wee! Practicality's uh, not great. It's not great. No, that's not. It's a strong suit no. by any measure. The problem here is that we don't have cup holders in the front, which oh, yeah, we didn't even right. we didn't even mention that. No cup holders in the front. Are there cup holders in the back? No, you've got your side so pockets. No cup holders. You can't have drinks in this car unless they're water bottles that you can either like throw on the floor what? or put in the little back side Ford pockets. Ford is an American company though, right? Yes, and which means... Don't got no cup holders! How am I supposed to bring my Route 66 Sonic drink with me? Right. Uh, I'd probably give it a four on practicality. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's like not that great, but it's not super it's bad. It's not abysmal. It's not as bad as the slingshot. Yeah. Value. One. Value, I think it's pretty good. I for, think it's great. For If you pick one of these up for 15, I think this one in the condition it in, is in is probably a little bit on the higher end, probably yeah. more like 20,000, but still. I'm gonna say- 20,000 for this? 20K in the shape that this is in, for what it does, that is a value of eight for me. Whoa, yeah. that's freakish high. This is why I'm going to give this a much lower score than you just did. Okay. No safety features that I know of. I don't care. I guess it has an airbag. Yeah, it does have an airbag. I do see that. But, um, I mean, come on. Like, if you get in a crash in this, you're yeah, dead. Yeah, you're pretty much dead. No, like, infotainment or anything. You can get a car for $20,000 today that has all of these. That has, like, significant safety features. That has significantly better fuel economy. But none has... of the soul. None of the fun. A Miata. Okay, fine. Miata's the only one. A Miata, yeah, you can, Okay, you, fine, there are a couple. You can, you can buy a Miata for like 20 grand, brand new, that has all of these safety features, all the infotainment, and that's still probably mostly just as fun as this. Yeah. To drive around. I would we, say we've so. We've driven a Miata. And, like, and it's, they are a blast. It's pretty much just as fun as this, I'd say. But so, I'd also give the Miata a value of like eight or nine. Yeah, but the Miata has much more value than this does. But it's still it's, it's, missing... It's newer, the... it has a warranty, it has safety features, it yeah. has a manual transmission, it's a convertible, you have literally everything this does and more. But you're still missing the X factor of this is like an older, more unique car. Uh, this is something you pull out of your garage every once in a while and just have a blast in it. Miata, you can daily and have fun. I don't think that matters for value, though. 
You might be right. Okay, that's fair. So my value on this is a five. Woo! <laughs> this is what the people come for. <laughs> they want the disagreement. Cool factor. Cool factor, I think, is maybe a little higher. Yeah, maybe um, a little higher. It's a, it's a little higher, but I don't think this is that cool. This is not shockingly cool, no. Nobody's I, like, oh my god, a 1990 Mustang. No, uh, but when I see it, I'm like, oh, sick. This is pretty good. think that. <laughs> yeah. But it, to your average person, has anybody... We've seen a lot of people walking around no. of their dogs. Has anybody taken a second look at this thing? No. No. Um, I'd also probably give it a five. Wow. It's like... I was going to give cool, it... cool, but... I was gonna give it a six. I've got a soft, like I said, I've got a soft spot for these boxy cars, but I acknowledge that this is not, to most people, a really cool car. Right. Quality. Quality. I mean, that's soft, but that, there's a lot of lot there's of cheap lot plastic of in here. Really, really a lot. Cheap plastic, yep. Honestly, probably a four. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, the problem is, it's has it stood the test of time, or has this been really well maintained? I think it's the latter. I think it's just been really well maintained, if I had to guess. Yeah, something is going to break if you're not super meticulous. I'm going to give it a 3.5. Fair enough. Last one, fun factor. Fun factor, I think, is actually where this car shines its highest. Yep. Despite all the crap I just talked about this car and all the negative things, yeah. it is actually a fun car to take out and drive. I enjoy this a lot. I shall give it a fun factor of 8.5. What? I am <laughs> at my I'm at my very happiest when I'm driving a crappy old car that's kind of fast. <laughs> that is the best thing in the world. That is so funny to me. Man, okay. I was like talking it up, but I'm not going to rate it that high. 8.5? Eight point five. Eight and a half. There are very Eight few cars we've driven that are more fun than this. Wow. I'm going to give it a six. That's fair. I mean, I'm not going to... I'm not going to torpedo the show and because you, you gave it a six. I think eight, thinking about it. 8.5 is insanely <laughs> high for this. That's like Ferrari, almost like Lamborghini, like high, well, high up that, The Urus, I probably gave something. I think I gave the Urus an 8 or an 8.5. So you think this, well, no, you think this is as fun as the Urus? I do. All right, what do we got? What's our average score here? My poor little Mustang didn't deserve how you done it. He got a 32.75, 32.75. That's not big oof, but it's oof. It's not a big oof, but it's a little oof. It's still an oof. It's probably appropriate for the age and quality of the car. I think it's appropriate. There, there's cars that you can buy for the same amount of money as this that are just, in my opinion, better. Yeah, oh, like absolutely. Miata. I totally agree. <laughs> Miata, better, just better. Yeah. Period, better. But I'm still gonna go out and buy one of these. Yeah, I mean, I understand it. Like, yeah. This has charm, I guess, where the Miata doesn't. Yeah. But I love Miatas, don't get me wrong. Whatever. All right, that will about do it for the 1990 yes. Mustang 5.0 LX. I still think a 32.75 is overrated. Tell this man how wrong he is in the comments. <laughs> if this is your first time stopping by, thank you, ignore him. Come back for the next episode, we'll see you then. See you guys. Bye guys. You know, sometimes when I've had a bad day or I'm just really stressed, I like to come out to my car and just watch Curiosity Stream. It's really relaxing, you know? Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service for people who actually like to learn stuff. They have thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. If you like our show, you'll love their speed category. It's got a ton of content on cars and other things that go fast. We've recently partnered with Curiosity Stream to help build Nebula, our new streaming service. Nebula is a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators. Because we all appreciate how supportive our fans are, Curiosity Stream is offering a free Nebula subscription with every purchase of a year-long Curiosity Stream membership. With this bundle, you get the best of both worlds. Curiosity Stream is home to high production value documentaries and nonfiction work, whereas Nebula is a place for educational YouTubers to try new things and experiment with different formats, things the YouTube algorithm would punish us for. Curiosity Stream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so they're offering Grand Test Auto fans free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com/gta. 
When you sign up for CuriosityStream, you get instant access to thousands of nonfiction titles, and you'll get to watch a bunch of new episodes from Grand Test Auto months before they hit YouTube, plus lots of other great Nebula originals. By signing up for CuriosityStream, you'll be helping not only GTA, but the entire educational community, as we work together to build a place where we can create exciting new content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give it a try by signing up using the link below. We promise you'll love it.